Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and uh, welcome to my monthly video. <laughs> I've been uh, spending a lot less time making YouTube videos, and I've just been doing other stuff, and life has gotten pretty busy, and I mean, I've always been doing something, but uh... I've been thinking about my last video that I made, and I didn't really want to leave that as the latest video on my channel. Um, I think it sends an important message, but uh, I actually wanted to just follow that up with the idea that I'm actually a really, really joyful, happy person. Um, that's one of the things that makes me such a joyful person is that I've been through, like, I've been through the low times and it's really given me an appreciation for the high times and even just how great it is to be alive. Um, I had major spine surgery when I was in my junior year of high school. I was unable to walk for the better part of it was like three or four days the better part of a week and uh, then I was walking with a, with a walker and my world was pain I was on uh, I was on morphine for a couple of days and then I was on uh, narcotic pain pills that uh, thankfully you know I never became dependent on those it wasn't very long before I didn't need to take my pain pills anymore and uh, I didn't know uh, how many people in my own generation were getting hooked on narcotics during that time uh, that's something that we're seeing now um, what I was experiencing actually was being set free from being crooked <laughs> I, I did not stand straight and I still don't stand straight uh, I'm a uh, I'm a uh, yeah I'm still a little a little crooked uh, around 20 degrees or so off center and that's manageable it was it was a lot worse and I can do so many things now that I couldn't do before uh, I just did a little bit of lifting weights which is just amazing for me you know I, I I couldn't walk for a while and before I had my spine surgery I was the weakest boy in school and I was weaker than most of the girls um, I couldn't uh, in in sophomore year of high school so that's what uh, 10th no, 9th grade something like that yeah I think it's 9th grade I could not bench press 45 pounds I couldn't bench press the bar I couldn't lift it off my chest I can't I can't believe like I can't even picture how weak that is that's so weak and uh, and now I'm pretty strong you know I I moved a a bunk bed <laughs> Uh, piece by piece from uh, from halfway uh, well no it's just just about an hour and a half from my house uh, we bought a bunk bed from somebody for the girls and I had to take it all the way apart more or less uh, unscrewing everything and then haul it home in the forerunner and it all managed to fit and then I put it all together so like when I say that I've been busy like I've been busy <laughs> doing stuff and I've almost almost caught up on the dishes too I, I'm kind of a prize ladies but you know this prize has been claimed already so don't fall in love but it is still around me I see a lot of a lot of families are having trouble because of uh, of the the lockdown and the stress from that. You know, uh, not to get into politics, but it's it's been a strain on a lot of people, and uh, stressed out people have problems in their marriages. And as uh, as a guy who married my dream girl, you know that that really 
It really means a lot to me that uh, my friends are going through things like that. And um, I just watched, oh, the better part of an hour. Yeah, a little more than an hour into uh, Yonmi Park's um, interview, I guess. It's uh, on the Joe Rogan podcast on Spotify so join me as a fellow uh, person of culture and I mean if you listen to this channel you're probably a man of culture um, and get on Spotify and watch that episode 1691 that just came out Yanmi Park uh, she is a person who escaped from North Korea which is literally the darkest place on earth and figuratively the darkest place on earth um listen to what systemic oppression actually sounds like look at what happens when a government has enough control over its people to do whatever they want to do and they throw off every moral constraint um it it hurts you know that's uh I, it's almost 2 a.m and i'm always asleep by now i'm not sleeping right now and it's because i was listening to the things that she had to say so like where in where's this joyful person you tell me about Toshio well let me tell you something let me tell you what made my day I held my strong wiggly chirpy happy little man of a man child for an extended period of time today as he used the elevated position to seek out new fun and exciting objects and to just track and scout everything in his field of view with his very clever eyes my thick strong chunky little man my joshy i am so happy and so proud as a father just to be involved with his life and to know that I, I I made that little man and he's so blessed already he has an incredible strong manly body and a sharp mind and that flashing smile of his the joy at seeing people that is that is absolutely the cherry on top the fact that I already know that he delights in people uh, I can't tell you how much that means to me, how how happy that makes me. And I've got my shadow over here, my Brooklyn. She was so active today. She was scouting out um, out the window that she can see straight out of now from her perch atop her new bunk bed. She claimed the top bunk immediately and she has been spending all of her time <laughs> between there and just you know whatever duty stations she has to occupy over the course of the day because she is a busy busy small woman um i'm just so i'm so happy i told little baby zoe she's not a baby she's too she's a toddler I told her to go lay in bed and unlike my other two kids she actually loves bedtime <laughs> she loves getting cozy and when she wraps herself all up in her blankets her favorite thing is just to like to smile at me and just be totally happy and content and then I just talked to her a little bit and told her how wonderful she is and and she is, uh, you know, she's going through these stages of development as a two-year-old where uh, some of the things that are kind of more negative about 
about growing in your understanding of the world uh, the idea of personal property and like the insecurity that comes with not actually owning anything or knowing how things are earned but she's just like mine <laughs> you know and she's got little sister syndrome pretty bad she's she's very defensive of the things that she wants and uh, the two girls do bicker a fair bit but I've also seen them just bonding as sisters and being so happy to play together and I mean I didn't have a sister growing up I don't get to I didn't get to experience any of that and it's great to see them just being able to do girl things together and have a friend from the beginning of their lives uh, that they can keep for the rest of their lives and I'm always just so so happy to consider my wife and how she didn't get to have a sister growing up and like she gets to see these girls doing sister things all the time and it's just it's just so exciting and just knowing that we are the two of us you know my world is pretty small right now and I've I've deliberately made it smaller because I I saw what was coming and I have a pretty pretty good awareness just of myself and I, I'm always talking to the Lord about what's going on in my life. And it's like it's like man talk, you know, where we don't actually talk to each other. We just kind of sit shoulder to shoulder and work on the same project together. And then when when the time is absolutely right, then, you know, words are exchanged about what needs to happen. And then it just happens. And uh, what I'm telling you is uh, I drank the punch a long time ago when it comes to being a Christian. And uh, I've been walking with the Lord for a while. And I hate, I absolutely hate being religious. I'm never going to be religious. Um, and to me, that just means that you don't, you don't have to be... You don't have to have a formula for how you talk to God, you know what I'm saying? Like, He knows you. He created the rules of the universe. He's got... He knows how to communicate. And if you're willing to, uh, to communicate with Him honestly and openly, uh, then you're also able to. The, uh, the blood of Jesus is enough to deal with the traction on that one. And instead of like setting aside time to pray or having some kind of prayer that I pray, I, I do I do have I, I have some things that I can that I can do when I feel like doing something like that. But the best time that I've ever had with the Lord is when I just share my thoughts with him. I share my life with him. You know, I, I I call out the things that I see to him and be like, God, are you seeing this? You know, <laughs> are you seeing what these people are doing? Are you seeing what's going on today? And uh, I mean, rhetorical question, obviously. But uh, all of that is an overly long-winded way of saying I've been feeling like hard times are coming for a lot of people I think that it's a good time for people to commit to their families it's a good time for people to know who their friends are and to know where they stand on things and to have just a go make some friends go be good to people because in times of trouble, it's better to be friends with your neighbors than to uh, to have a brother far away. But uh, don't take my word for it. Anyway, that's it's all very long-winded and roundabout, and you can probably tell that it's 2 a.m. right now, and I'm just kind of rambling. But. I think that it's easy to lose perspective on 
I don't know, what's, what's prosperity, what's happiness, what's doing well, what's success? And, I mean, look at North Korea. What's really happening there is that people are starving to death. As, as a matter of course, it's normal for people to starve to death because of how poor and, and helpless and impoverished and downtrodden the people are. And yet, we live in the same world and we have access to the internet and uh, we have you know most of us have food every day and i really love the things that that i have and i also know that life is life is incredibly short and it's also the only time that you have to accomplish the only thing that matters and what you do with your life is it, sorry what you do with your life is all that matters for you that that's obvious right but track with me here the things that you suffer through are really the key to your ultimate joy you don't know what real happiness is unless you have a handle on what it is that you're not experiencing anymore when you enter into that happiness <laughs> does that make sense i have such a value for peace in my home because i i lived in an unpeaceful home for a time and uh, I have so much value on honesty because I've experienced what it's like to not be honest myself and to deal with just trying to keep track of all your lies and then I've also dealt with people that are not honest and it's so it's so frustrating and useless to trust a dishonest person and i have such a value for for my wife who is committed and kind and honest caring responsible thoughtful um and you know she's the she's the other half of holding up this family along with myself and my kids my kids, God willing, are not going to experience so many of the things that I experienced and I'm not going to experience what Yeonmi Park experienced growing up in North Korea and seeing other people suffering really brings home for me remembering the suffering that I went through in my own past and and the ways that I suffer for my friends now as I watch them go through things and I know there's things that I'm going to go through myself that I'll suffer through you know I had a I had an infection in my taint in the skin <laughs> earlier uh, that I'm just healing up from uh, over the course of about two weeks and I had to to go have a have a doctor like drain it out and and get on antibiotics and you know praise the Lord that that I changed my mind and actually went to the the walk-in clinic because that was uh it was actually a staph infection so i needed to get antibiotics and it was already starting to uh to open up on its own so i know tmi but like physical suffering you know that was uncomfortable painful it put me in that position where like i don't really want to do physical things and uh, there's a lot less physical stuff that i was doing i wasn't yeah i still gotta mow my lawn by the way it's 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 starting to get to the point where my uh my douchebag neighbor i know who he is he's the one across the way but my other neighbors are pretty cool people uh 
but you know everybody's got a douchebag neighbor if you don't you know maybe you're the guy watch out but <laughs> my douchebag neighbor might call the city on me might call the police because I'm growing dandelions in my lawn so I really do have to mow it uh, but you know I had a I had a I had an infection I had I had an open wound in between my legs so I wasn't gonna go out there and get all sweaty and uh, you know bleed all over myself I put a diaper in a, you know I've got these baby diapers cuz I've got babies and I put I put a baby diaper in uh, inside my underwear to catch the the blood and stuff from that while it was healing and it was it was very effective so that's an option for all you out there they're looking for you know easily accessible gauze when you've got kids it's uh it's it's probably good enough you know i was on antibiotics too so that yeah that that helped things out anyway this has been more or less a catch-up video and I'll probably put some gameplay of the game that I've been playing in the background. It's a uh, it's pretty ridiculous game. It's it, it's 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 an experience, but it's also one of those things that I can just kind of like tap around and listen to something in the background and not get too worked up about even if uh, even if things can go south in that one pretty quickly it's, it's still you know it's not the same as trying to play an online game and raise a family at the same time all right well i hope you all are doing well uh, i will check in on the discord every now and then and uh you know i want to hear i want to hear what you guys are going through if you want to share I have already shared too much about my own life, so you know that I love to hear what's going on. And, um, I know that it's important to be able to talk to somebody sometimes. So, you know, catch me one of these times if you want to talk. Bye bye.